Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, actually, I am starting with uh, the development of CNS, Central Nervous System, from this session because I have got many requests asking uh, about the development of nervous system. Uh, so, uh, before viewing this session, I would like you all to see uh, some of the important sessions we have, which I have already done because then only you will get a continuity for this session. So, I would like you all to see uh, the first three weeks of development that is the first development in the first week second week and third week uh, which is given under general embryology in the playlist then you have to see about the development of intraembryonic mesoderm as well so if you uh, see all these four sessions then you will get a continuity for the session so we know that uh, it is uh, the embryonic period and fetal period uh, how you divide the entire intrauterine growth so, in the embryonic period, it is further divided into two more sets. That is, the first three weeks is the germinal period where uh, you get uh, all the three germinal layers developed. That is, the ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm developed. And further, fourth to eighth week is the embryonic period proper. So, the entire period starting from fertilization till eighth week is the embryonic period. And after that, you call it as fetal period. So, up to uh, first three weeks we have seen uh, by the end of third week we have a trilaminar germ disc. If you just imagine it is in the form, in the form of uh, a disc, the developing uh, fetus in the form of a disc, if you imagine you know that it is just three discs. You have the ectoderm, you have the endoderm and in between you have the mesoderm. So, ectoderm we know it is having a protective function, endoderm is having a nutritive function and mesoderm is for the development of the skeletal system, the muscle system and the blood, and blood vessels. So, all these three systems, all these three layers we have mentioned but one important thing we need now that is our nervous system. So, it is time for our nervous system to develop. So, it is by fourth week of intrauterine period we have the development of nervous system. And it is in this period we have the development of somites. I have uh, developed in, uh, I have uh, discussed about it in detail in, uh, in the session under intraembryonic mesoderm. So, the somite period is actually the period between 20th and 30th day. Okay, so that is that period between 20 and 30th day is considered as somite period. Now, we will have a look at the embryonic disc. So, this view is as if you have the ectoderm, you have the mesoderm and you have the endoderm, right. And over the ectoderm you have the uh, amniotic cavity and below the endoderm you have the yolk sac. That is the view. Now, uh, you are going to look from above after removing the amniotic cavity and the fluid. You are just removing the amniotic cavity and fluid and the view from above. This is the view from above. Okay, so here you have the amniotic cavity, we have removed the amniotic cavity and now what you are seeing is the ectoderm. Okay, you are not seeing the mesoderm and endoderm lying beneath it, you are just seeing the ectoderm. Understood? Now what you are going to say is, this is actually uh, the ectoderm, the entire ectoderm. So what happens is, uh, towards the, this is the cranial end and this is the caudal end. Okay, so the dotted thing I have uh, for uh, easy understanding, I have made the ectoderm now here as dotted. Okay, now what happens at the caudal region, we know that there is a primitive streak formation with the Henson's node. We have the uh, intraembryonic mesoderm formed and in the middle you can see a rod like structure that is our notochord. Okay, notochord in the middle which extends from the Henson's node at the caudal end to the buccopharyngeal membrane at the cranial end. Okay, so in the middle you have the notochord. So this notochord is seen through the ectoderm. Okay, we have not removed the ectoderm. We are seeing the Henson's node, you have primitive streak, uh, uh, the notochord through the ectoderm. Primitive streak is actually seen in the ectoderm and the notochord is actually lying between the ectoderm and endoderm. Please uh, see the development of notochord that session. I am not going into the details of uh, formation of notochord now. So, for the time sake, this is a view again as if you look from above after removing the amniotic cavity. Then you can see the notochord in the middle just below the ectoderm. Okay. Now, what is the role of notochord? Uh, actually, during development, every structure which is formed will induce the formation of the uh, structures related to it. That is what we say. 
Okay, so what is the function of notochord? So notochord here plays a very important role that is till now we have a plain ectoderm lying above the notochord. With the formation of notochord, what happens to the ectoderm is a region lying above the notochord will get differentiated. So this is the view of uh, differentiated ectoderm. Okay, so you can see the notochord lying below the ectoderm and this red colored region is known as neural ectoderm or neuroectoderm. Okay, so neuroectoderm. So the region of the ectoderm lying above the notochord now differentiates as neuroectoderm and the remaining ectoderm at the periphery is now known as surface ectoderm, surface ectoderm and neuroectoderm. So that is what is happening to our ectoderm, the ectodermal differentiation by the formation of notochord. So the region of uh, ectoderm lying over the notochord will differentiate as neuroectoderm and the remaining ectoderm will form surface ectoderm. And what are the derivatives of surface ectoderm? We know that surface ectoderm is actually giving rise to epidermis, hair, nail, uh, then sebaceous glands, wet glands and we also know that stomodium and proctodium, the future mouth and the anal cavity, all uh, at the cranial end and caudal end, all these are actually derived from the surface ectoderm. And what is derived from the neuroectoderm? So neuroectoderm is actually giving rise to the entire nervous system. So that is how you have the uh, neuroectoderm developed. Now we are going to see what is happening for the neuroectoderm. So neuroectoderm uh, at first it is actually just a plate of uh, cells lying above the notochord, isn't it? Extending from the Henson's node to the buccopharyngeal membrane. Now what happens is so this is actually the uh, flat plate or the neural plate which is lying uh, over the notochord. Now what happens is the neural plate will actually sink so that there is a groove formed in the plate and this groove will extend from the cranial end to the caudal end. So this is the tube like uh, groove which is extending from the cranial end to the caudal end. So first the neural plate uh, will develop a fold on either side and there will be a groove in the midline and this groove will extend from the cranial end to the caudal end and it will be lying just above the notochord in the midline. So this is, so all these are views as if we view from the above after removing the amniotic cavity. Now this is another view of the same uh, uh, what embryo. What happens here is you are just uh, imagining this embryo like a sphere and if you are just making a coronal section okay you are just making a coronal section and you are just removing one part away and what are the things which you will be seeing in the other half okay so this is this view you are taking the whole thing and you are just making a coronal section you are removing the other part and this is the view so what are the things which you can see? You can see the amniotic cavity above. This is the amniotic cavity and this is the yolk sac. Okay, so this is the amniotic cavity and yolk sac. And in the, mid, uh, in the middle you can see that this is the ectodermal region, this is the endodermal region and this is a notochord. So in the ectodermal region you can see a red colored region. This is the red colored region. Okay. So the part of the ectoderm which is lying above the notochord that is our neural plate. Okay, first it is actually getting differentiated into neuroectoderm and it is now known as neural plate which is lying above the notochord. Now uh, from this point onwards I am not going to repeat repetitively uh, draw the amniotic cavity and yolk sac. So these sessions are actually concentrating on this aspect. I am not drawing the amniotic cavity and yolk sac. Okay. Now we are moving on. So this is a neural plate. Understood? So neural plate and this is the notochord. This is the remaining surface ectoderm and this is the endoderm. This is the section. How it looks like. Now what happens is so this region is actually our intra embryonic mesoderm. Right. 
So on either side of the notochord, you can see that there is a bulge from the inner aspect. So this is due to the proliferation of the mesoderm on either side of the notochord. So what happens? The cells will be actually pushing the surface ectoderm on either side of the notochord. So what happens? The neural plate will remain like that, but there will be actually pushing off the ends of the neural plate on either side of the notochord. So what happens? A groove will be formed and this junction where the neural plate gets folded, this is known as the neural fold. Okay. So this is known as the neural fold. So you have the notochord. So above the notochord, uh, the cells are not pushing the ecto neuroectodermal layer. So it will remain as it is. But on either side of the notochord, the mesoderm will proliferate and push the cells upwards so that there is a fold formed between the neuroectoderm and the surface ectoderm. Okay, so that junction is known as neural fold. You have to keep that in mind. And what is the important of importance of neural fold? Neural fold is actually giving rise to two important groups of cells. One is neural crest cell and the other one is neuroepithelial cells. Okay, neural crest cells and neural epithelial cells. These are the two components which are actually forming from the neural fold. Now what happens is as the folds uh, move towards the midline, the groove is getting deeper and deeper. So you can see this is, so first it is flat here, now the it will become deeper and deeper so that the folds will try to approximate towards the midline. So you can see that the folds are actually moving towards the midline. Now this is the notochord and finally there is a theory uh, for the fusion of the um, what the neural tube the theory is like cells fuse together uh, so which are the like cells here here you have the neurectodermal cells which are forming part of neural plate and this is the surface ectoderm okay so surface ectodermal cells will move towards the midline and they will fuse with the surface ectodermal cells of the opposite side and the neural plate cells the neurectodermal cells on either side will come and fuse together so what happens the surface ectoderm here and here they are actually bridging the gap and they fuse in the midline and this neural plate cells the neurectodermal cells actually move towards the midline and they fuse together. So what about the neural fold cells? What happened to the neural fold cells? They are not having any like cells, isn't it? So the, among the neural fold cells, one group of cells actually are not actually staying in the ectoderm. What happens is they will just get detached from the ectoderm and will first lie in the midline as a group of cells and then it will split into two and it will now lie on either side of the notochord in the dorsal aspect on either side of the notochord and neural tube. So these group of cells are our neural crest cells. Okay, so among the cells in the neural fold, one group of cells won't remain in the ectoderm. It will get detached from the ectoderm as our neural tube but it won't go either to the ectoderm or to the neural tube. It will stay as a separate mass first in the midline and then soon it will replicate into two and will move, on, move, to, or, uh, move to either side of the neural tube and it will lie on the dorsolateral aspect and that is our neural crest cells. And what about the second component our neuroepithelial cells? Neuroepithelial cells which are seen in the neural fold, they will remain there and they won't get separated from the ectoderm. So that will ultimately result in the formation of ectodermal plug cords. Okay, so this is the ectodermal plug cord. So ectodermal plug cords are cells of the neural fold which are not getting detached from the ectoderm. Okay, and they will stay there when the neural tube gets detached. They won't go with the neural tube. They won't go with the neural crest cells, but they will stay there in the ectodermal layer. And that is actually giving rise to the formation of ectodermal plug cord. So at this stage, we have our uh, surface ectoderm fused together. 
then you have the endoderm as it is, you have the notochord in the midline and you have the neural tube formed from the neurectoderm that is a neural plate which is actually transformed into neural groove and finally we have the neural tube formed just above the notochord and we have the neural crest cells which are actually getting detached from the ectoderm and the neuroepithelial cells will remain in the ectoderm and will form the ectodermal placard. So that is about the neural tube formation. So this neural tube formulation is actually what is meant by neurulation and that is set up the very important step. So till now we are seeing a coronal section. Now this view, this view is as if uh, you are taking a uh, sagittal section. So if you consider this as the uh, embryo, developing embryo, if you cut it through this angle, okay, this is the sagittal section. If you cut, th cut it through this angle, till now we cut it like this. Now we are planning to cut it along the length. So what happens? This is the view, right? So here again you have the amniotic cavity, you have the yolk sac, this is the notochord, this is the new rectoderm lying above the notochord. Now you can see that it is forming a neural groove then it is having a neural fold and finally a neural tube which is formed. So we can see the neural tube here which is already getting detached from the ectoderm. So this is a neural tube which is detached from the ectoderm. But when we have a look at this point you can see that it is not completely detached. Right, anterior part and posterior part is still attached to the ectoderm. So how is this fusion occurring? Is it just uh, at one stretch or is there any order for the fusion? It is said that along the length of the embryo, uh, the fusion actually occurs at the fourth somite level. If you uh, count the somites like one, two, three, four, at the fourth somite level, it starts fusion. It is somewhere in the cervical region. There it starts fusion and then it will extend cranially and caudally. That is how the fusion of the neural tube is happening. It is not like you have the neural plate, you have the neural groove, just stop, the entire thing is closed. No, it is actually you have the plate, you have the groove and in the cervical region it will fuse, then it will extend towards the cranial region and likewise the caudal region will get fused. So first in the cervical region at the fourth somite region uh, around 20th day the fusion will start okay around the 20th day the fusion will start and it, it will first fuse towards the cranial aspect and then it will fuse towards the caudal aspect but it will continue the communication with the amniotic cavity it, will, it won't completely get detached so why this communication is made this is a hollow tube right but uh, a communication is maintained, you have the uh, amniotic cavity above. So why this communication with the amniotic cavity is maintained? We now know that uh, our blood vessels are not well developed at this stage. But every cell needs nourishment, isn't it? So if, if it is uh, trying to get separated from the entire ectoderm, it will be just like a mass suicide of cells because it will be just getting detached from the ectoderm which is actually uh, supplied by our uh, nourishing amniotic fluid. If it is just getting detached from the ectoderm, what will happen? The entire neural tube as it is formed, it will just get destroyed. So in order to maintain nourishment, these two ends are still making a contact with our amniotic cavity so that the amniotic fluid will enter through the pores and will nourish, continue to nourish the neural loop till the blood vessels are established. So this um, opening seen at the anterior end is known as anterior neuropore. Anterior neuropore and the opening seen at the caudal end is known as posterior neuropore anterior neuropore and posterior neuropore and is it uh, is it maintaining this communication no as soon as the blood vessels are developed uh, now, uh, it won't need the amniotic fluid so it will get separated from the ectoderm so when is this closure of the uh, neuropores happening it is said that the anterior neuropore closes at around 20 somite stage it is actually uh, corresponding to middle of the fourth week and the posterior neuropore is actually closing at 
25 somite stage and this is roughly by the end of fourth week so middle of fourth week so first neuropod to close is anterior neuropod that is by middle of fourth week and the somite period is 20 somite stage and the posterior neuropod is next to close that is uh, closing by 25 somite stage that is towards the end of fourth week so the closure will start by 20th day and uh, it will start uh, it will uh, close by the middle of fourth week and it will end by the end of fourth week that is what is happening to the uh, neuropos so once these neuropos are closed the entire neural tube will be detached from the ectoderm and now we will be seeing this as a just a hollow tube with both ends closed and which is lying just above the notochord extending from the Henson's node to the buccopharyngeal membrane. So can you imagine the entire nervous system is just developing from this simple tube which is lying over the notochord, isn't it? And now what happens is at the cranial end this tube is actually developing uh, or it is enlarged at the cranial end and you can see three vesicles, isn't it? So these are actually forming are prosencephalon, mesencephalon and rhombencephalon, the forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. And the remaining part of the tube which is uh, seen towards the caudal end, this is actually forming the spinal cord. So the fate of all these vesicles and how spinal cord, uh, different parts of brains are formed, we will be seeing in the coming sessions. For the time being, this is how the neural tube is formed and how uh, the cranial end is developing and how the uh, caudal end is remaining as such to form the spinal cord. So have you ever imagined what happens if this anterior neuropore is not closed? What happens uh, if the posterior neuropore is not closed? If the anterior neuropore is not closed, that condition you call it as anencephaly. Anencephaly means uh, what happens is uh, this uh, neuropore will remain open and as a result the cranial vault won't be developed and the brain will be just seen as a degenerated mass which is communicating with the surface. And what will happen if you get a, a failure of closure of the posterior neuropod? According to severity, it will range from spina bifida to rachiasis. So uh, I'm planning to do a separate session on the different varieties of spina bifida. Um, just I need to get some time to do all these things. I love to do many topics but due to time constraints i am not able to complete all topics but i will try my level best so posterior neuropore if it fails to close it will st uh, it will have a wide range of uh, clinical presentations starting from spina bifida minor forms to severe forms like rachiasis so this is about uh, neurulation which is the main event happening one of the main events happening in the fourth week of intrauterine period so in order to conclude uh, you know that uh, the neural ectoderm is actually this is the neural ectoderm which is getting differentiated from the ectoderm right and this is actually giving rise to neural tube which we are discussed here we have the neural crescents lying on either side then you have the ectodermal plug cord which are the cells from the neural fold which is lying there in the ectoderm and what are the derivatives the neural tube is actually giving rise to our entire central nervous system the neural crest cells are actually giving rise to our uh, peripheral nervous system and the ectodermal placard will be giving rise to the hypophysis, the inner ear, etc. So this is uh, about neurulation in a nutshell. In the coming sessions, I uh, will be dealing with the neural crest cells and its derivatives and we will be seeing the development of the brain vesicles and spinal cord in detail. Thanks for watching. Uh, those who haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and please share this video uh, uh, if you find it useful and uh, please leave your comments. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for watching.